All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Library Research Refresher, the first of our Graduate Student Essentials Workshop Series. Uh, I'm so excited that you're all here today. And I'm, because I'm a librarian, I'm very nerdily excited to tell you all the things that the UI Library has to offer. So uh, I am Jessica Martinez. I'm a reference and instruction librarian. I'm also the liaison to the College of Science. We'll talk about this a little bit more later, but whatever college or department you're in, you have a librarian and our job is to um, help you with any of your research needs. So if you are a graduate student in the College of Science, I am your librarian. So today we are going to talk about accessing the library. I'm going to cover some of the uh, some of the adjustments we've made due to it being 2020 and because of COVID. Then we're going to talk about keywords, research questions, um, the best way to find those resources you need. And then I'll show you some tips and tricks for searching the UI library catalog, finding articles. We're going to discuss citation and citation managers, and then there'll be time for questions and feedback at the end. Although throughout the entire workshop, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat box. I'll be pausing throughout and you can ask questions then or Jaleesa will be reading those chat questions to me then. So any questions about the library, this is a great opportunity to ask those and you're probably not the only person with your question if you have one. So please ask those. All right, so some things to know about the library. Your Vandal card equals your library card. That's the, the way you check out books and your Vandal ID is how you access things online. Right now, uh, your Vandal card is also how you get in the library building. Uh, we are currently close to community patrons and so you use your Vandal card to get into the building. We have off campus and online access. You can access any articles or eBooks anything online, our digital collections, anything like that, you can access off campus. Um, you'll use your Vandal ID to authenticate, just like you do when you're going through your email or anything like that. Um, and that's how you can, can access any of our online um, resources. We have an interlibrary loan service and also something called Summit, which is a group of 37 other libraries in the Pacific Northwest that we share resources with. So what this means for you is never pay for an article. A lot of times when you're looking for an article, you'll like get to a page, you'll get to the publisher's website and it says 40 bucks to read this article, you know, even to read the whole abstract. Please, please don't pay for them. We will find you a copy of that article through interlibrary loan. This does mean that you'll want to plan ahead a little bit. Interlibrary loan doesn't work for writing an article at midnight when it's due at 6 a.m. Um, it only takes like one to three days for a PDF to arrive in your email, but you do want to give yourself just a little bit of lead time to get that perfect article. Um, research assistants, we have liaison librarians for each subject, like I mentioned before. I'm the liaison to the College of Science. Jalisa, who's monitoring our chat, is the liaison to um, the social sciences. We have one for each college. So um, I will, there will be a handout at the end that links to the page that has um, all the liaisons for all the different colleges so that you can find yours. And we are happy to help with any research or library questions you have. There are also reference li librarians and um, I'm also a reference librarian. We're available via email or chat. Uh, there is a chat box on the library website in the catalog. You can send us an email um, and we are always happy to help. That's a little bit more of like immediate assistance or um, maybe you're having trouble accessing an article, that kind of thing. We're there to help you figure that out. So COVID adaptations. Um, like I mentioned before, um, that the all floors are open to UI affiliates with a Vandal ID. So you go in the 
if you're entering, like looking at the library, you go in the far left door, the outside one's open, you swipe your card and then you can get into the building. We, uh, in a normal year, are open 24 five, but this year we are closing at midnight. Um, so we are checking out books. You can borrow any books you want, uh, but we are quarantining them for three days upon return, just as a safety um, precaution. That's what the study that came out way back in March said for library materials was, was to quarantine them for three days. And so, so that's what's happening. You'll see in the, the library catalog when you're searching for things, it'll say available, check quarantine status. So you can see, oh, is this actually available right now? Could I go find it in the stacks or is it being quarantined right now? Um, but you can check any of those books out. We still um, are offering curbside pickup. So if you request an article in the catalog, you'll get an email when it's ready and you can request to pick it up um, in the back of the library. Or you can just come in and get it from the circulation desk. So if you don't want to come in and, you know, walk through the stacks or, or be around people very much, curbside pickup is an, an option. Um, some of our services are closed, uh, mainly the mill and the studio. The mill is our makerspace. Um, it's amazing. It's so fun. I can't wait until it's open again. And there you can do 3D printing. There's a vinyl cutter. We have mini robots, Raspberry Pi and Arduino, uh, button maker, um, just a lot of great stuff in the mill. Uh, but right now it is closed because it is a small space. Um, although hopefully we'll figure something out to, to let you do some 3D printing if you want at some point. The studio is our audio visual recording studio where you can um, there's a green screen in there. There's recording equipment you can borrow, both a video camera and sound recording, as well as all top of the line editing software. So for future semesters, keep those in mind, although right now they're closed. And there's the link to that that Jalisa put in the chat. So um, if you wanna read more about our hours or available services, they're all on that COVID impact page. All right, so I just wanted to highlight a couple bonus resources for grad students that I thought were pretty neat. Uh, we have access to the New York Times um, through the end of the semester. Uh, due to budget things, it will not be available in 2021, but you still have a couple months left. You can create an account and then you have access to the New York Times. They have an app. You can just read the newspaper every day on that. It's pretty great. Um, the links to that are gonna be at the handout at the end. We also have and will continue to have ongoing access to the Chronicle of Higher Education. Just search Chronicle of Higher Education in our search bar. Um, it's a great thing to, especially for a graduate student, to stay on top of some of those issues happening in academia. It's also a little bit cathartic sometimes, some of their articles. Uh, other people are probably having the same struggles or complaints that you are having and a lot of times those are published in the Chronicle of Higher Education. We also have streaming services. Uh, there's Canopy, um, which has documentaries and the Criterion Collection, like really high, um, high level films. Uh, great, great things. A wonderful search interface. Um, looks a lot like Netflix, but is mostly scholarly type films. And we also have Swank, which is more feature films. We have like the, their top 50 and that's um, still great movies, but maybe a little bit more fun. Things like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, things like that. That's the one that comes to my mind that's on there. And those you can both just search and they're like um, databases that you can access through the library catalog. The main um, like just for grad students, a uh, resource that I really wanna make sure you all know about is ProQuest Dissertations and Theses. This is a database. I'm gonna go show you how to access it here in a second um, and exit out of my um, PowerPoint presentation. But this is a database of just dissertations and theses from colleges all, all across the United States, possibly the world. Um, and you can browse theses uh, and dissertations by university and department. Um, 
or advisor even. So if you're like, oh, like who, like what kind of research is like this advisor doing or this department doing, and you want to see all the theses that are coming out of that department, you can search by that. You can also search by topic. I highly recommend taking a look at these because there's um, they're samples. You can see how people are formatting their papers. You can see how they're writing about things. There's also a lot of really great unique research like dissertations and theses are some of the richest research in my opinion because people they spend a lot of time doing these research projects and often get to do something a little bit more niche than sometimes um, academic uh, writers get to do later in their career. I always enjoy finding a great great dissertation or thesis. Okay, I'm going to just show you how to access that. I'm going to pull up the library website. Okay. Can everybody see my screen okay? Okay, so there are a few ways you could access ProQuest dissertations and theses. You could search for it in the catalog. You can also get to any of our databases with this databases A to Z drop down here. There's that by title if you want to do that, or there's this drop down here that's alphabetized. And we're going to go for this dissertations and theses full text. PQ DT Global. They've changed the name of it a few times, but it's the only one that has theses and dissertations in the title. So here's this basic search. If you're doing topics, you can toss those in that search bar and see what comes up in this advanced search. you'll see, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you'll see that you could um, toss keywords in like your research topic in here and it'll look anywhere, but it'll also look, you know, in um, just the abstracts, just subjects and indexing. If you're just looking for certain authors, that's, that's where you do it up here. You can add lots of rows. You can limit by publication dates if you know there's a certain one you're looking for. But down here, this is the really, this is really neat where you can get really specific with your search is um, you can look up authors, but you can look up advisors and there's like a, an index of advisors in here that you can um, just to see who's in there. And then you can also do that with universities. So like for instance, you know, if you were looking for ones from just University of Idaho then we're here and you can just select that and only see those ones that are done at, at the University of Idaho. Um, this is also fun because that means that when you have written and finished and submitted your dissertation or thesis, that means we're digitizing it and putting it in this database so that other students can find it later. You'll be famous. So exciting. Okay. So this is ProQuest dissertations and theses. Um, any questions so far about finding research um, or, or these, these particular resources that I've shared that I think will be of um, great interest to you? Okay. Good, good, okay. So then we're going to come back. We're gonna talk a little bit about finding those library resources. So I just talked a lot about what we have, but what are some of those best ways when you're starting your research, you're starting your literature review, how are you gonna find those resources you need? So our, you have to have a topic. And this is my dog, Beatrix the dog. This is her upset with me because I'd been reading on my Kindle 
and you know she's saying stop that but she's going to be my my example uh, research topic today so if i was researching beatrix the dog i would do some keyword generation uh she's a pit bull blue healer mix and it's important to remember when you're searching library resources that there's a lot of ways that people can refer to the same idea so a pit bull could be referred to in research as an American Pit Bull Terrier, an American Staffordshire Terrier, an American Bully, and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. All of those referring to the same thing. A Blue Heeler could be a cattle dog or an Australian cattle dog. And even dog itself could be canine, especially if you're doing scientific research, you're always going to want to throw in your um, scientific, uh, scientific names for things. Um, because because often that's what they have been written and identified as in the literature. So then if we have these terms, then those are our keywords and then we're going to combine those keywords using something called Boolean searching. And this is how most library databases work. Some of them are getting smarter where you can use natural language searching that uh, natural language searching is what you use with Google, where you can say like, what is a pit bull? Um, or, you know, like, what is the behavioral problem of pit bulls? Those kinds of things, you just throw it in there. Boolean lets you be much more specific, and it's also how library databases are designed to be used. So, things you need to know about Boolean. You can always find this usually in the help documentation of databases. So if you are really, and you probably will be going really deep in a topic, really like really being a power user of a database, you can go look at their help documentation and see all the different Boolean searching and, and ways of searching that they recommend because they are all a little bit different. But these are general ones that will be very useful. So quotation marks, the results contain an exact phrase. So if I put American Pit Bull Terrier together in quotes, it will only give me results that have all four of those words in that order. Without those quotation marks, I'm going to get results back for just the word American, just the word pit, just the word bull, just the word terrier, none of which are what I actually am looking for. And is how you connect phrases and keywords and the results contain all keywords. This makes your search results um, smaller. Makes them, you know, like you have to get all those four words, American Pit Bull Terrier and the word behavioral. And you have to get all of those in one piece of literature, one resource to get that result back. If you use or, that really expands your options. The results contain at least one keyword. So a good use of that would be to say dog or canine. So if you wanna use the everyday term for something and the scientific term, that's a great use of the word or. Parentheses help you create these very complex um, search phrases. It's all algebraic. So if you put things, you know, dog or canine, then you could put and and another phrase next to it. And you can make these very long. I've seen paragraph long um, search search phrases that people use and then you can always set an alert and get those things and um, you can get very specific not the results exclude this keyword so an example would be like panda not express uh, i don't recommend using that on the first time you're doing like a a search for something. This is to be used if you're searching for something and you're getting annoyed with some of the results that you're getting back. Um, a lot of brand names do this, like Jaguar, not car, you know, or if you're looking for Jaguar car, you'd like Jaguar, not cat, you know, to that, that lets you exclude a lot of those results that are bogging you down. The last one that I want to share with you is the asterisk or a wild card. And that lets the um, that lets you truncate a word and then get all of the different endings for it back in your results. So in this situation, um, I put an asterisk at the end of the word behavior, and then I get all the results back with both behaviors and behavioral. This also works great with scientific terms or um, things like 
biology, then you get biology, biologist, biological. And so you're not limiting yourself just based on the form of a word you're using, you're getting all those results back. Okay, any questions about Boolean? We do have a question. Um, someone asked, where can I search specialty periodicals and magazines the university has a subscription to? Okay, um, so I guess by specialty, you're meaning like those, like a, like subject specific ones, like architectural digest, that kind of thing. Yes. Okay, great. Wonderful question. There are uh, a couple ways you can do that. Um, I'll, let's see. So if you are in the physical library and you've gone into the building, we have um, the most popular specialty journals on a magazine rack on the first floor. And um, we have like Science, Nature, Architectural Digest, Newsweek, Time, all of those things, uh, pretty, some pretty specific ones. Um, on that magazine rack, the most recent copy is out and then the whole year previous is like underneath it. You like lift up the bookshelf and they're behind there and you can read those in the library. If you, I'm gonna escape, escape, escape and go show you on the library website. You can, if you go to advanced search, and we'll be back in here in a minute, but you can, uh, you can put the title of the journal you wanted here. So like if you wanted Scientific American, and then you could say journals. And then here we have the, the online access to Scientific American. So you've got the, these are special issues. I'm not sure why they're coming up on top, but this one here is you'll be looking for the name of that journal. And um, if it's online, it'll say online in parentheses with that online access. Or um, here, this one, you can see this is in the UI library periodicals collection, non-circulating. Um, then we have all the back issues for Scientific American on our second floor. So if you wanted to go look at all those past print versions. Um, so if, if you know the title, that's how you can do it. Um, you could probably do some browsing online by subject or um, yeah, you could, you could do that. If you don't know the title of what you're looking for exactly, you could uh, instead of any field and you could try subject and then and try the subject field that would maybe be a little bit hit and miss but you could probably do it that way does that kind of answer that question what you were thinking about okay so you currently live overseas so access online is your only option okay yeah so you can access those things online and see what we have if you find something um if there is an art journal article that you find some other way you know like if you're out just searching the internet and there's some article that you can't get to that's that is um an exact reason to use interlibrary loan it doesn't have to be in i mean it, I guess it couldn't be in something that we'd have access to, but it can be really anything you find online. So searching the title here, or if we don't have access, or even if you're having trouble accessing it, um, if you put it in the interlibrary loan uh, system and we do have access to it, then we'll scan it for you and send it to you in your email. Like we'll, we'll do that. That's um, document delivery is also a service that's available through interlibrary loan. So especially if you're off campus, don't live in Moscow. Um, tossing things into that interlibrary loan is, is how to do that. And that's my next slide is how do you get a PDF of an article? So if you wanted one of those, there's ILL is on that homepage. Now it'll pop up in the catalog a lot. 
if you get redirected back to it, but this is how to do it from scratch is you're looking for ILL, which stands for interlibrary loan. And then you'll come to this page and it'll say use Iliad login. The first time you do this, um, and even if you've done this previously, we changed our system, so you'll have to do it again. Um, Cause now you can use your Vandal ID, but you click on that, you set up an account, pretty easy. And then you just use your Vandal ID to request things. And this is what the page looks like. And then you would just select, you know, I'm looking, I want an article, I want a book, I want a music score. And then you fill out as much information as you have. And they can find things with like not a lot of information sometimes. I mean, please give us as much information as you can, but they are very good at finding things. Okay. Was that any other questions about interlibrary loan or finding things? No? Okay. We're gonna go back to the library website and our catalog. So again, starting from the library website, I'm just going to put in a little, um, oh look, it's already there. But if I put in canine and behavior, and the library catalog would combine those two words anyway, but just again, the habit of using Boolean. I'm going to search that. So when you're in the library catalog, um, just going to show you a few of the different resources that you have when you're in here. Um, what you're searching is told you here. So right now we're searching the UI library summit. So all those 37 partner libraries and all, all of our e-resources. And you can limit that if you say, I live overseas. I only want e-resources or, um, you know, I'm only in, you know, I just want a book. I don't want any articles. You can limit it that way. This is also how you get to advance. You can do an advanced search. You can select where you're searching there, the material type, the year, have lots of lines. So those are all there. Um, here, this Ask Us is the reference librarian. Um, so if you're having trouble finding something or accessing something, you can just chat with us anonymously or not, and we'll help you find it, track things down. Um, or maybe, you know, different words you could be using for your search. Down here you'll see that it's telling you what type here and there's all these limiters on the left hand side, just like if you're shopping on Amazon, um, where you can choose the availability, you can sort by relevance or date if you're like, I just want the newest information. Um, you can sort, you know, sort differently. Um, resource types, if you just want to, dissertations and theses are here, or you're just looking for newspaper articles, all of that's over here. So let's say that this dog behavior book is what you want. This is the, the record and here I'm just going to point this out. If you wanted to email this to yourself, you could, if you just want like an email of the, the citation and the link to it. If you're writing something with a citation, always be looking for these little quotes. Every, um, every month in the UI catalog, there's, we'll, we'll create a citation for you. So you don't have to do it from scratch. And it's always those little quotes. And then there's also, I clicked on it accidentally, there's this little pin. And these are your favorites. Um, and you can make a list as a guest and then it'll forget you after you're done with, you know, you close your browser window. Or you can sign in. And then it'll take you through UI libraries, student, faculty, and staff does that and then it has my account up here. And so I go to this, you can see your loans, your requests. And if I wanna see my saved items, doing it, oops. Okay. 
Oh, there it is. I just had to scroll down. So see, then they're all here. All of these books that I've saved that I thought were really like interesting. And then, you know, it's kind of like your Goodreads is that you can, can come back to those later. And you can have very long lists of those. And then you can like export those lists. And like, it's a, it's a great way of keeping track of stuff. So favorites. All right, let's go back in here. I'll just show you a few more things. Um, that are available to you to make your life a little bit easier. Again, here's the citation. You can email it to you. If you're having trouble with an article and you can report a problem, tell us it's not working, something's wrong, and we're really fast and we'll, we'll find you a PDF, we'll fix the problem. So please let us know if you're having trouble. Um, for this, again, if you're not on campus, we can, you can request a copy. You can ask for a digitization request. So if you only need a chapter of this book, we can scan it for you. This book is in place. And then what I wanted to show you down here was these Library of Congress subject headings. Our library, as most academic libraries in the United States are, is organized by Library of Congress call numbers and subject headings. And those can really help you find other resources that are of similar subjects. So you can click Dogs and Behavior, and you'll see that that says the subject is exact. So we're looking for things that have been cataloged as this topic. And then you get these um, results back. And that can really help you locate other resources that might not be using the same words you've thought of to find resources. So when you get, you know, into your research, you can be very I can be at least very single minded about like what you're looking for, what words you're using and using these Library of Congress subject headings helps you expand that search while still, you know, staying in on topic. If you're in the area, um, we also have reference books. We have some encyclopedias online, but we have reference books on the first floor of the library. Um, using my search as an example, we have like the American Kennel Club reference book that has like all the dog breeds in America. We have um, ASTM standards. So if you're doing an engineering project or uh, one time I helped someone like figure out the right temperature to roast coffee beans at, that's in the ASTM standards. Uh, so all kinds of things in our reference collection if you need some encyclopedic um, knowledge. We also have a lot of encyclopedias in our circulating stacks on the second, third, and fourth floor as well. And if I didn't mention that earlier, that's where the books are in the library is the second, third, and fourth floor. So should have put that on the first slide, but now you know. Okay, so that's the library catalog, all the like fun tools that we have um, to help you find what you're looking for. Um, and I'm going to just show you a little bit more about like finding articles. So if you're probably going to spend a lot more time looking for articles than you are books, although you'll probably do a little bit of both. Um, and some of our the helping ways that we've created to help you find those articles, we have this articles page. You can search by journals here. Oh, that's another good way of, of looking for those specialty journals is you can click on this page and then do a little bit more browsing by subject. Although that'll just give you the leg up of what, what I was telling you to do by searching by subject. But there's this journals link. We also have these research guides and those have been put together by the liaison librarians um, for our subjects. And so I'll just show you really quick. So let's say you're an art and architecture student. There's, um, all of these research guides for different classes and different subjects have been made. So let's say landscape architecture. And here you've got who your librarian is. And then you've got reference books, find articles up here or up here. And then Kristen has put together some of the databases that we have at U of I that are subject specific to landscape architecture that are going to be your best bet for finding on topic articles. And so using these research guides will help you find those subject specific databases um, and other resources that um, your subject librarian, your liaison librarian has put together for you. 
So those are really useful. Um, there's also databases A to Z. And then our two main uh, really big databases are Academic Search Premier, which is um, pretty much any subject you could think of in Web of Science, which is mostly sciences and the social sciences. Although there's quite a bit in there too. Um, fun fact, Academic Search Premier, you don't have to be a U of I student to access that, you just have to be an Idaho resident. So after you graduate, if you're still looking for some scholarly articles, Academic Search Premier is your best bet. Because all of these are um, expensive and that's part of, you know, what you pay in your tuition goes towards paying for these databases. So use these resources while you have access to them. You can also access some journals here, um, Academic Search Premier, JSTOR has a lot of older things, Web of Science, and then Google Scholars all here. So if you go to Academic Search Premier, I just want to show you some of the things to look for. A lot of websites are hosted on EBSCO, which is a platform. And so you can search here and you can see that you can choose to search with Boolean or find all of your search terms. So a little bit more of that natural language searching. You can limit by full text, peer review, published date, what publication it was, all of these things. But what you're gonna wanna look for, say canine or dog. Once you've searched for something, is this PDF full text and check for full text. Um, but you can click into something. See, this one has a PDF full text link to it. And then here you have these subject terms, which are not Library of Congress subject terms, but using these subject terms and databases can be a great way of finding other related articles. And then over here, we have the cite button so that you don't have to create your own citation. And they've got all these different kinds of citations. So this is a very quick, just little glimpse into some of those tools that Academic Search Premier has that most of the databases will have. Um, so you're gonna be looking for the find full text, check for full text button. And what this does is it'll take you back through our library catalog to see if we have access to it because if we don't have access to it through Academic Search Premier, we might have it through a different database, different journal, some other way. This one we don't. And then there's that link to request from Interlibrary Loan to get it. So, let's see. Ooh, Google Scholar. That's what I wanted to show you real quick. Google Scholar can be very, very useful. Um, um, so I'm off campus today. I'm at home. You might have heard my dog, who I showed you a picture of earlier, bark earlier. Um, so there's nothing here on this right hand side. If I was on, oh, no it is, because um, I had already done this, but this is what it what might look like. But if you're on campus, you're going to see all of these University of Idaho get it. And you too can be at home and see what we have access to by coming up to this little hamburger guy, clicking on that, you go down to settings, and you choose library links. And here you just search Idaho, and it brings up all of these universities in Idaho. And you can just select all of the ones that say University of Idaho. And then when you're in Google Scholar, you'll see what we have access to. So these ones up here, like these books or this journal, you'd probably have to get through interlibrary loan. But here, if you see this University of Idaho get it, just like an academic search premiere, it pulls you back through the library catalog to, to access that. Those other ones that don't have the University of Idaho get it, you'd have to maybe use your interlibrary loan link that I showed you earlier from the homepage of the library to request those. Oh, this one's open access. That's fun. Okay. Any questions 
about searching in the library catalog or um, the tools we have, um, searching in databases, anything um, that you can all, any questions you have. Take a drink of water. Oh. <clears throat> okay, um, another question about um, searching for video material. Yes, so, so many, that's a good questions. I have to add these to my slides for next year. Um, so, video material. The, if you're doing streaming services, uh, you can find Canopy is going to be in this drop down list, or I'll show you databases by title just so you'll all see this. So if you want Canopy, you can choose K. So Canopy streaming services is streaming. And then Swank, I think will show up here. Swank and Digital Campus. So those are your streaming options. If you want something that's on DVD, um, American Pitbull and Behavior, you just throw your search term in there and then it's either under advanced search, material type is um, DVD video if you're looking for just a DVD. You'll also notice there's this audio and video, which will take you to those things on Canopy. So um, that's, that's an option there. And then over on this left-hand side, you can also choose research type. And then you can see here, like we have one DVD Blu-ray that's um, by your search term. Um, there's a DVD Blu-ray. There's also DVD videos. So you might wanna select both of those. Sometimes stuff gets cataloged kind of wonky. So we'll make, make sure. So that's how you search for videos. We do have a DVD collection on the second floor, documentaries and feature films. Um, pulling up the chat. We did have another question. It said, will there be Zoom sessions that show how to use the individual databases in the databases A to Z list? Um, we, we don't have a workshop. Um, specifically on on any on, on all of those databases but if you get in touch with your liaison librarian any of us would be happy to have like a, a zoom session with you and show you how to use your subject specific databases is yeah you could just be like hey i you know i need to use web of science for my you know my paper like can you just give me a you know a, an overview on how to best use it um and any of us would be delighted to meet with you via zoom and and do that although if that is a if that would be of interest we're going to have a survey at the end of this and you could put that in as a suggestion and maybe we will do that later we're always looking for new ways to help um, and library resources are not intuitive so as hard as we try we do not succeed at making them intuitive um, uh, any other questions, Jalisa? We had a question that um, someone had mentioned um, that Avon has streaming video as well. And I just mentioned that's one of our newer streaming video uh, databases and we're still learning more about that. Um, and then there was a question which might be an access issue with Canopy. It said that um, when they tried to access it, it says that they need to request access to it first. Have you seen that issue at all, Jessica? I have not seen it. That might be... Hmm. If I was doing my chat reference right now, I'd tell you to clear your cache and browser history and then try again. Um, that'll fix a lot. Um, you or, oh, actually for Canopy, you might need to... So it looks like um, what you're seeing about requesting access, that's if you want to request access to for the library to purchase a film that we don't have. There are a number of films that we already have purchased streaming rights for in Canopy. So you'll be able to access those. It's just the ones that we haven't purchased yet. You can request that we do so. Yeah. So if you're teaching a class, 
and you want to like make sure we own own something to show students then you would use requested that way yeah also not our library but the moscow public library has canopy as well so um but they're because they're a public library their access model is totally different so um i don't know if you want to check that out too that is available to you um if you're a moscovite um okay then i have oh yes okay we are coming up on time i have this virtual handout jaleesa is going to put the link in the chat and this has links um to all these different resources that are available to you like your liaison librarians our hours all the different um things you can search for just a lot of good information all in one place um, so you can access that. Um, this, these are the rest of our graduate student essentials workshops that are going to be happening this semester. Uh, next week is planning and organizing a literature review. So then you can, you know, now you have the beginnings of knowing how to search for some of those resources. Then next week we'll talk about uh, Julissa will be talking about how to organize that literature review. Building a scholarly presence. It's important, especially if you're going to be looking for an academic job later to have a scholarly presence, which just means, you know, having uh, possibly an academic social media presence, knowing what alt metrics are, what's an H index, like what are my citations, like how do I know like how many people have cited me, all those things. Uh, and Marco Cipherly Valencia will be teaching that. We're going to be talking about citation managers, tips and tricks for Microsoft Word, Excel, and OneDrive, organizing your research and data management, and then creating a research poster with a focus on doing it online since all our conferences are now on the internet, which is exciting in a lot of ways, but also no snacks. So that's sad. Um, Let's see. Oh, just real quick before we wrap up, I just want to discuss some other real quick, some other library resources that that do exist. We have a center for digital inquiry and learning. If you're into digital humanities, that is a really cool resource to to check out. We have special collections. Um, so like the International Jazz Collections, if you uh, want to look into the mining or logging history of Idaho, plus a lot of other stuff. They're great. Um, I talked to you how about the mill and the studio, how awesome those are, but are closed this semester. Reference librarians here to help you access things. We have a map room, also currently closed, but it is a room full of maps. And so if you need a map, we might have it. So check with us. Um, and then we do have a vandal food pantry that is normally open at the library. Although I believe right now they're only doing curbside pickup for that. So, but things to know, the way things are right now will not be hopefully the way they are during your whole graduate student experience. So, um, yes. Okay, so as everyone's taken off, there is a assessment survey just so uh, that I know what to cover when I do this again next year. And uh, so please take that. Jaleesa is gonna put the link in the chat. Um, We'll probably, yeah, we can take more questions if you have any more questions that you would want to ask while I'm here. I know we are at 120, so just, I'll be here. I think we'll probably chat. Okay, Jalisa put that chat, or the assessment in the chat. Thank you all so much for coming today and I'm excited for all of your research you're going to do. Um, please reach out to your librarians. We'd love knowing what you're researching and what you're what you're talking about. It's so exciting. So let us know.